Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and a bunch of people wrote in after my recent review of this HP Chromebook here to see how well Chromebooks do as game streaming devices. In other words, you don't run the game on the Chromebook, you run it on a more powerful PC and stream it over to the device to play back, hopefully with a game controller. And that is the topic we're going to explore in this review. Now at the time I'm recording this video, some things don't work at all, namely console streaming from the Xbox and PlayStation. Uh, GeForce Now at the time I'm recording this video also doesn't yet support Chromebooks. Those things might change in the future, but right now most of the low-end Chromebooks you're going to find out there for low prices are running with Intel processors. And even though these can run Android, which is where those game streaming apps typically run, uh, they don't have Intel builds available. So if we pop into, for example, the Xbox game streaming preview here. You can see that it's not available on this device because this is an Intel Chromebook and they just don't have a compatible application at the moment. That might change. When it does, we'll do a follow-up video. And if I missed anything in the course of this video, please let me know down in the comment section below because I do believe this is something we're going to be covering a lot in the future. Uh, I will, though, say up front here that it's probably best to get a low-priced Windows machine that will be able to do most of what uh, you might want to do when it comes to game streaming. Now, all of that said, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this laptop here, this Chromebook, is on loan from HP. We'll be sending it back to them when we're done with this video. Uh, the game controller you might see me use here is an X, uh, 8 bit uh, SN30 Pro Plus. This came in free of charge from 8 bit but it is one of my favorite game controllers because it has a lot of different compatibility modes and everything else here I purchased with my own funds. So let's get to it now and see what this game streaming on Chromebooks is all about. Now, although we'll be using the 8 bit Doe controller today, we did earlier test an Xbox One controller and a Sony PS4 controller. All of these worked both wired and wirelessly with the build of Chrome OS that came on this HP here. So all is good on most of these major controllers. Again, I like the 8-bit though just because it costs less and is probably easier to get at the moment, but if you have these other controllers laying around, I would try those first. And I also found a great website here called uh, html5gamepad.com, and this will let you test all of your controllers through a web page, basically, to see what the Chromebook has picked up, and you can make sure all of your controllers are working properly before you go forward with this. Now we're going to be looking at two different ways to stream games. We're going to be looking at doing it through Android apps and also one area where we can actually stream directly to the browser, which of course will be ideal in most circumstances when using a Chromebook. But let's start with the Android stuff first. We're going to start with the easy one, Steam Link. All right, so the first thing you want to do is grab the Steam Link app from the Google Play Store. If you've got an older Chromebook, you may not have access to Android apps, and as such, you're not going to be able to get this to work. Uh, but most Chromebooks made in the last two years or so have access to this, and they've added this capability to a lot of the older ones, but not all of them. Now, I've already installed the application. I do recommend having your game controller paired up before you launch it. And then after it finds your controller, it's going to ask you to connect to a computer. Now, mine's telling me here that it couldn't find any computers, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to click Other Computer, and it's going to put a PIN code up here. And what I'm going to do now is switch over to my gaming PC. We're going to go to the Steam menu. We're going to go to Settings. And then you want to go to Remote Play. And then you want to click on Add here. And then it's going to ask for the code that is currently being displayed on our Chromebook, which is 7607. So I'm going to type in 7607 and hit OK. And after we do that, I think we'll be in good shape. So it's waiting for the pin now. And there we go. It's now scanning once again. And hopefully, there it goes. It found it. And we're going to select that computer. And after we get connected here, we should be able to play some games once everything gets set up. It's going to run a quick speed test. One of the things that I didn't mention at the outset here is that uh, you'll probably want to make sure you've got decent bandwidth going to your device. I'm not talking about internet bandwidth here. I'm talking about bandwidth in the home. So Ethernet is always best. Uh, but short of that, you want to have a very strong connection to your Wi-Fi access point and preferably connecting to an AC access point that can deliver faster speeds to the laptop here. Uh, for whatever reason, it's going to limit itself to three megabits per second here. I can easily change that later. 
uh, and then it's going to warn me that the Chromebook here is an unsupported device, so don't call them if there are trouble. Now we've got one more step that we have to take, which is to configure the controller. And even if you use the real Xbox One controller and not this one that simulates an Xbox One controller, you still have to do this at least with a Chromebook. So we're going to go over here to the gear icon, we're going to go to controller, and we're going to select that Xbox One S controller and click on setup. And what we have to do here is actually map out the buttons because by default, even though it detects the controller properly, the buttons weren't mapping the right way. So you have to go through and just set all this up here real quick, uh, which I'm going to do right now and speed this up for you. Okay, there we go. We are done. So let's see if we can play a game on this thing. All right, so let's click on start playing here and see what happens. We're going to connect to the computer. Uh, what it will do is drop you into the uh, Steam uh, big picture mode so you can easily navigate with the controller here. Let's give it a second here to get connected and now uh, what we're seeing is actually an image being streamed from my gaming PC over the network uh, to the Chromebook. So we're going to take a look maybe at No Man's Sky. Uh, one thing I'm noticing right out of the gate here is that the input latency is pretty bad on this and that's to be expected running an Android app through uh, what is essentially not an emulator, but a container of Android on a Chromebook. So there are a lot of things in the middle of these button pushes that will certainly impact things a bit here. Uh, let's let this game get launched and we'll see how it runs. All right, it looks like we are up and running now. It seems like it's a pretty passable stream here. It seems to be working pretty nicely. There is again some input lag with this, so it's not the best experience, but we are running the Android app here on our Chromebook. I can hop into my uh, mech here and see how that works. So let's get into our mech guy here and hopefully it'll let me in. It's, uh, I'm in a stormy planet, which like, can kill me very quickly, but here we go. We're in my, my mech walking around and hopefully I don't break too many things. Uh, I have like my, my laser beam here as well and I can hop out of here and jump back into my spaceship uh, and fly off the planet if we want. Um, but all is good. It seems like it's working pretty decently here. A uh, little bit of extra setup with the controller, but it does appear that uh, Steam Link on an Intel low-end Chromebook here is something that uh, will work, at least uh, initially here, so that's good. Now, if you're watching my live stream the other day, you may have seen me really struggling with some of the other popular game streaming apps, including Parsec and Moonlight. I just couldn't get them to work reliably, but I did find one that works pretty well, actually. It's called Rainway. Let me pull it up here for you real quick so you can see what it looks like. Uh, this is free. Uh, there's a server app that you install on your Windows 10 gaming PC, and then on your device here, on your Chromebook, uh, you just go over to the Get Rainway button here and log in. And once you're logged in and you go over to the uh, Rainway for the web, you can just click that to open it up in a new tab and you're connected to your device. Now, one thing I suggest you do is hit the Start button on your controller so it gets detected. That's the one thing that I've noticed I've had to do on this to get things working. Uh, but then you're good to go. So let's take a look at No Man's Sky again, because this is really was uh, not working too well on some of the other platforms that we were playing around with. And now you can see we've gone full screen with this. What you're looking at is the image coming over uh, the network to my gaming PC here and No Man's Sky is loading up. So let's let this load and we'll see how it plays when it's all ready to go. All right, so we've got No Man's Sky here running on our Chromebook, again, being streamed via Rainway from our gaming PC. I am noticing some compression artifacts here and I think that's due to the bit rate that we're currently running at. Uh, so I may wanna manually tweak that to improve it based on network conditions, but overall, uh, it seems to be running with the least amount of issues uh, versus some of the other things that we have loaded up earlier. I also noticed that the input latency, while still very detectable, is not as bad here as it was on uh, some of the other platforms I was playing with. So again, Chromebooks are not ideal for this kind of thing, but this Rainway seems to be uh, working better than most of the other solutions that I've been experimenting with, especially from the standpoint of reliability. Uh, that's partly because this runs directly in the browser uh, via WebRTC and is a much more responsive way to do something like this on a Chromebook. And I think that's why it is working as well as it is. Now, one thing that I noticed on my particular instance of Rainway is that I was occasionally getting a jumpy cursor. Uh, if you go into settings and to advanced, you can turn on this option, uh, which they say may add some latency. Uh, so it's 
best to leave it off if you don't have the problem, but occasionally I'm finding that some things like mouse pointers are a little bit jumpy every once in a while, and enabling this will mitigate that. And on this Chromebook, it looks like I need to do that. Another cool feature of Rainway is that if you click on uh, this icon up here in the corner, uh, you can get access to your desktop remotely. And what I really like about Rainway is that it will work a lot like Parsec when you're not at home, provided that you have a decent connection where you are and you have a decent upstream communication uh, to the internet from your home. But you can see here we're able to access the desktop of the machine and we could kind of use this as a remote desktop client. Uh, what you can do here is hit escape to release the mouse because when you are using it here it kind of binds it to the screen. Uh, but if you want to get out of that you hit escape and then you can go here to uh, end the session with the desktop there. So lots of cool stuff. Works great here on the Chromebook. Uh, it will prompt you to install like a Chrome OS application so you can actually launch it like an app even though it's running as a WebRTC app. And altogether, I was really impressed with Rainway having played with it a bit. I would just be careful because, you know, it's a pretty much a one-click solution to log into your Windows 10 PC. Uh, that, of course, has some security implications, so you want to be very careful with the passwords you choose for this account. Uh, I don't know if they have two-factor authentication, but if they do have it, enable it just because you want to make it a little bit more difficult for people to log into your computer remotely. Uh, I would actually only run it when you want to actually access your PC remotely, but it looks like for Chromebooks at least, especially this particular Chromebook, Rainway feels like the best solution for streaming games from my gaming PC. Now we do have to talk about Google Stadia before we close out the video here because it is a Google product and it works great on this low-end Chromebook. My controller was detected just fine, as you can see here, and it actually looks pretty good. Let me give you the screen capture here from the laptop. Again, this is 720p, but it looks great, and this is streaming over the internet from Google's servers. Now, there's two different tiers to Google Stadia. There's a free tier where you have to buy all the games, and they have a pro tier that gives you a couple of free games to play around with, and then you can also buy additional games from the library. Now, like many PC gamers, I'm not all that crazy about Stadia from a library standpoint, primarily because I have a ton of games on Steam and on the Epic Game Store and, of course, through Game Pass now that I can't play at all through this awesome Stadia streaming technology. Uh, so you have to pay 10 bucks a month for that pro account to get a couple of games that you can play for free, uh, or you buy the games individually at full price to stream them from Google. And that's one thing that I think is a bit too restrictive for me. But if you don't own any PC games and you have a low-cost Chromebook and nothing else, I think Stadia is definitely worth considering because you can get uh, super high fidelity graphics here on a really low cost device and as long as your internet connection is decent enough you're going to have a very good streaming experience here with Google Stadia but it's not going to be for everybody and it's certainly not for me. So I have to say I think Rainway is my pick at the moment if you are using a low cost Chromebook and want to stream games from a gaming PC and again Stadia is a good choice if you don't own any games at all. I am sure many of you will have some suggestions for me, so leave them down below in the comment stream. Uh, we will also be coming back to this topic soon because GeForce Now, which is the NVIDIA game streaming service, is working on a WebRTC client of their own that will work similar to how Stadia and how Rainway work on Chromebooks, and that should be a really cool thing to try out because one of the things I love about GeForce Now is that I can use it with my existing Steam library, and you can see more about that in the video that I did a little bit earlier on that topic. So I'm sure we'll be back again with this. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.